Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. We're deep in the boa and python breeding season, and we're gonna show you the things we're excited about. You're watching Snake Bites. The python and boa breeding season are always one of the most exciting times of the year for me because you have so much anticipation for what you could potentially produce in the future. So I just want to go over a handful of the projects that I'm really excited about, both ball python wise, bigger python wise, and even boa wise. First off, I'm going to show you this cool project. This is actually a bumble belly, which is a bumblebee yellow belly, head for azanthic, bred to a pastel azanthic, which means I could actually produce killer bee yellow belly azanthics, which would be pretty awesome. Go ahead and do your job, boy. This is a fire spider yellow belly, and I'm breeding this guy to a super stripe. Basically, what could be made out of that is a fire spider super stripe. Should be a really cool animal. This project might not be cutting edge, but it still gets me really excited. One of my favorite snakes are these Brettles carpet pythons. They're just so beautiful, and we have a nice big group of them with some monster females, so I'm really hoping to prove some cool ones. Speaking of that, I do have one project in Brettles that I am excited about, and this is that project, the Hypo Brettles. I tell you what, I'm really excited to find out the genetics behind this. I'll be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure if this guy is a co-dominant or a recessive, so we're taking him back to his mom as well as a couple other females to find out what the genetics are behind it. This hypo spinner or ghost spinner is going to be a busy boy this year and I have high hopes for him. He's going to go to this super Mojave ghost, he's going to go to this Pastavi ghost, and he's going to go to this ghost Mojave spider. Should get some pretty cool snakes from him. This ghost pie is going to be a busy boy as well, not only to produce more ghost pies, but also to take them to honeybees, to pastel ghosts, and even to champagne het ghosts to try to produce some really cool ghost pie mutations. This pinstripe puma has already been bred to an enchi yellow belly. It's going to be incredible if we hit on an enchi pin puma. Certainly not a high-end project, but these Maclaps pythons are such incredible animals. I haven't produced them in the last seven or eight years, so I'm really hoping we get some clutches this year. And this animal in particular is just really beautiful. This killer clown is not only being used to produce more pastel and killer clowns, but I'm also breeding them to things like spinner blasts to try to make killer blasts het clowns. So Christmas is coming up really soon, and I don't know about you guys, but I'm a really early shopper because if I wait till the last minute, I end up broke. So I want to know, do you guys shop really early, or do you procrastinate till the last minute? Do you shop on Christmas Eve? Leave us a comment below and let us know what you think. Can the snake gods please let me produce a panda pie from these cine head pies this year? Hey, I'm willing to throw George into a volcano and sacrifice him if I have to. This lavender spider is going to things like pastel hat lavenders, spinner hat lavenders, and pinstripe hat lavenders. With any luck, I'll make some cool lavender spider combinations. I wouldn't say that I have cutting edge projects when it comes to big snakes, but I certainly love big snakes. So it's going to be really cool to prove stuff like these albino retics and even granite and albino berms are just awesome to hatch. Oh, she's a handful. I have a lot of Enchi stuff going on, and this year my star males are certainly going to be this Enchi queen bee, Enchi kingpin, and Enchi bee. We have a few other things, but those are secrets. I'm loving the crystal project, and with the crystal male and the super special male spider, we're certainly going to have a lot of potential this year. 
I have quite a few boa projects like this arabesque het for albino going to this sun glow male for some sun glow arabesque. Now this girl produced sun glows in the past, but I'm hoping I get some more. Will this be the year that the BHB boa curse actually gets lifted? One of the ball pythons I'm certainly the most excited about this year is will the shadow ball prove to be genetic? With the likes of Stinger Bees, Stinger Blasts, Enchi Sinis, and Enchi Lessers, this desert male has his work cut out for him. Probably my favorite boa in my entire boa collection is this leopard male. Now he's breeding to a T-positive albino this year, so I'm hoping for some double-head T-positive leopards. In the past, I've had problems breeding boas because I've kind of worked with them like they were pythons. So this year, we've made some changes and we're trying to duplicate what other successful boa breeders are doing. Again, we'll see if the results actually work out this time. I can't wait to produce some of these Amazon tree boas, just like this really pretty colored one. And some of my tiger Amazons that came from Danny Mendez should be a pretty cool year. All in all, boa and python wise, we have a lot of really cool animals breeding. And I've only showed you the tip of the iceberg. Hopefully it's going to be a great year. We certainly have a bunch of potential. We finally have another snake myth to test out. It goes like this. Back in the first century, the Roman philosopher Pliny the Elder actually said if you wore an amethyst stone on a necklace made of dog hair, it would actually prevent a snake from biting you. So let's go ahead and test this myth with Chewy. Now I just have to find an amethyst. Where's Artie? Okay, we're gonna go over a myth about some old dude who put a rock on a rope and was scaring off snakes. We'll see if it works. As you can see, I'm the Greek god Chewy. Here we go. Hi, I'm Piney the a Look at my rock. Oh. <laughs> it's working. Ooh. Look at my amethyst. Ooh. Ooh! Look at oh! <laughs> Ow! Look at Piney wore amethyst. So so chewy. Look at it. it'll stop all bites. You don't want to bite, right? Stupid. Oh God! <laughs> Ride the pony, baby. <laughs> oh, that one got stuck in my eye. Wow, I would say that one's definitely fiction. I'm gonna go check and make sure that Chewy's all right. By the way, if you guys have any myths that you want us to test out, go ahead and comment down below. For this week's comment of the week, the question was, what's your favorite boa morph? And a spider guy 1995 said, One of my favorite morphs would have to be the albino arabesque. It looks just like a caramac bar. But it would also be cool if you could make an invisimorph, just being able to see the tongue and the eyes. Keep up with the show, because it's friggin' epic. Let me ask you a question. If you have an invisible snake and you feed the rat, would the rat then be invisible? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the show on our Python and Boa breeding season, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to follow this up in several months with a show about really cool baby snakes. If you guys want to follow all the things that are going on here, make sure to hit me up on Twitter, at SnakeBitesTV. Until next time, this has been Snake Bites. That's when you know you're in a snake. On the wallpaper on your phone is a snake copulation. I don't want to show too many people that, do I? <laughs>